Good morning, Atlantis. Good morning. We trust you sleep well. That music was for uh, Rick Searfoss. We hope you recognized it. And we have your uh, post sleep cryo config when you're ready to copy. Houston Atlantis, and they were finally ready to hear the big plan. Okay, Joey, uh, let me pull out a few notes. Okay, Chili, on the big plan for the rendezvous. Essentially, the rendezvous has moved 30 minutes earlier for a 30-minute earlier docking time than the original nominal plan. This is due to the one-day late launch. And that is already reflected in the Block 20 Delta data that we sent up earlier in Message 3. The undock is also about 30 minutes earlier. And as you know, this was already close to your wake-up time. And therefore, we've moved your sleeps a half hour earlier to preserve that relationship between your sleep and, and the undocking time. And this carries through through the rest of the mission, which actually your deorbit will occur about 40 minutes earlier than the original plan. Now, a little bit on the APU. The mission management team has met and uh, we, the engineers have evaluated this, and we are still uh, looking towards full mission duration unless something unexpected comes up. Uh, and the basic rationale is that no further degradation is expected while you're on orbit and the APU's not running. Uh, so we feel that an entry, whether it be tomorrow or nominal end of mission, is essentially the same with respect to the APU. There will be, however, some procedure de procedural deltas for entry in terms of when to start up the I APU and handling its pressures. Uh, so we expect that, and we'll be getting those to you later in the mission. I'll copy. Okay, Dave, we copy all that. Uh, understand the rendezvous will be, uh, TI will be 30 minutes earlier about, undock will be 30 minutes earlier, and landing will be about 40 minutes earlier, so that ought to work out all right. And uh, right now we're full mission with the APU, and we'll have some deltas we can expect later. Roger that. And if you look at when we get into the rendezvous checklist, uh, it's at about 2 plus 30 uh, PET towards TI. And we now do require an NC4 burn at about 1 plus 30 prior to TI. And so we still give you some extra time in your post-sleep uh, by getting you into your rendezvous checklist uh, at about 2 plus 30, uh, but not what we had hoped originally where there was no burn that morning. And again, the times I just gave you are approximate. They'll be coming up in the full plans uh, as we get them to you with precise times. Okay, Dave, understand. And uh, we see the, the deltas and the time there for the rendezvous. and. Uh, uh, understand the, the little bit. All right, in good shape. Thanks a lot. Copy. We're LOS. Got a lot of snow on the ground in Eastern Europe.
Thus, we have the data for CWC number two and three fills when you're ready. Yeah, just come out here, Dave. Go ahead, Joey. Yeah, Bill, we're uh, set up on the mid-deck for the PAO event and uh, noticed by the message we're going to do it on air to ground two and then fill the plans. Uh, yes, sir, that's affirmative. Uh, also, there there is uh, one little delta to your message. Uh, uh, the actual NBC show is called uh, Nightside uh, versus News Channel. We copy chili. Houston, last we've completed docking ring extension. Uh, the ring initial position light came on with tunnel position base at 69, 72, and 69. And thanks, Rich. Uh, those numbers all look good to us, and uh, we think uh, that 72 really reflects a bias, and it also is actually at 69 percent. Okay, that's what we heard pre-flight. Thanks a lot. And Atlanta's Comtech from the mid-deck on air to ground two. Atlanta's Houston loud and clear on air to ground two. And we do have uh, live on the mid deck, Chili. Morning, Tom. Commander Chilton, would you comment about this oil leak? Is it all right now? And what are the potential hazards, if, if not? Well, uh, the way we understand it, it's a hydraulic system leak, and uh, it is isolated, and uh, we think we're in good shape right now for full mission duration. Let me pass it over to Rick Searfoss, our pilot, who uh, handled the uh, problem on asset. Well, Tom, uh, as Tilly said, we're marching towards a nominal mission and uh, nominal reentry. Uh, one of the beauties of the space shuttle is the tremendous redundancy that's built into the system. And, uh, relied on that, and uh, in particular, we relied on uh, some great training and uh, fantastic uh, control team down on the ground that uh, handled it uh, as smoothly as if it were a nominal situation. So we were very pleased with the whole flow of events and taking care of that situation yesterday, and we're happy to stay up here for the full duration. Now, you're not worried. You, you don't need the hydraulic system, I understand, now until you land and come back to Earth. Are, are, are you anxious at all about that? No, not at all. Uh, and in fact, uh, we anticipate, uh, based on the words from the control center last night before we 
with the bed that uh, APU-3, the, the powers the hydraulic system 3, will be up and running for entry and essentially a nominal configuration to come home uh, by isolating to the leak, apparently, to uh, some of the valves or the plumbing that uh, are involved with the main engine gimbling, which, of course, we don't need uh, at all on re-entry. So it looks like we're in real good config, both for on orbit and for coming home. Don't put that microphone down, uh, Dr. Lucid. We've got quite a few more questions to ask you since you're going to be setting uh, most of the records on this mission. I, I want to know what you think the significance of this might be for the average American. What, what does it mean to us? Well, I think it's, uh, well, it's not that I think. It is the start of a continuous presence uh, of American presence in space for an extended time. And this is sort of uh, the forerunner of the space station, which we are currently in the process of building. And I think this will pay, um, you know, offer great dividends to the American public. Now, we've got three other astronauts we're not seeing, uh, Godwin, Clifford, and Sega. What, what, what are they doing? Are they sleeping now or preparing for a spacewalk? Well, let's see, um, Rich and Linda have been working real hard to get ready for their spacewalk today. Uh, they did a lot of checkout on their spacesuits and uh, prepared their equipment. And Ron right now is back in the uh, space lab uh, working on the uh, biology experiment laboratory, biology laboratory we have back there, the ESA BioRack for the, from the European Space Agency. So Ron's uh, back there in the glove box working as we speak. Well, listen, thank you very much for joining us. I, I know you're busy, and all I can say is have a good time. And, uh, gentlemen, I apologize for spending so much time with Dr. Lucid, but after all, she's the one that will be gone five months, and I thought we'd better get a lot of conversation in before she disappears. Thank you very much. This is very understandable, Tom, and uh, we're sure going to miss Shannon uh, when we drop her off at Mir, and we'll look forward to her return on STS-79. Thanks a lot. Excellent. Thank you. Commander Shilton, Colonel Searfloss, and Dr. Lucid, thank you for joining us this morning on Nightside. Atlantis Houston uh, for your IMU Align and for MEFC ACT and DEACT. Atlantis Houston, uh, we are live back on the mid deck. And uh, by the way, Rich, uh, we really uh, uh, like that banner that you have down there. And I uh, had dinner with a whole bunch of folks tonight who I think are enjoying seeing that. Well, Bill, what are you doing after dinner with a bunch of Zoomies? Hey, you got to dinner with a bunch of West Point grads. And, uh, Chili, I will tell you, we did uh, have one representative from each of those other uh, younger uh, schools, and uh, we, uh, we did. We heaped uh, loads of abuse on them all night. Uh, I'm sure they were up to it. And we're ready to copy uh, your MEFC activation deltas and, uh, any, and the IMU uh, information. 